Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host, Jennifer. And as per normal, I'm starting the video before I got everything finished because my battery is probably going to die on this camera. <laughs> um, yeah. I am charging five batteries currently because I've been really bad about charging my batteries last week because I took the week off after premiere week and... I'm actually filming this at the end of that. The videos are wildly out of order. The next, I don't know, probably two, three weeks are going to be wildly out of order. You're just never going to know what's going to be shown, what's going to happen. I need to make sure these are all charging because I'm going to need them. I am here to talk to you about, oh, two of those are almost charged. I'm here to talk to you about my first time ever going to a wool and fiber festival. Now, I've never been. I have been crocheting, and this is funny because every time you ask me how long I've been crocheting, my answer changes because I have no idea when I started. <laughs> I kept saying, it's been about five or six years, but I've been saying that for a while. And uh, um, a post came up in my memories on Facebook of this beautiful um, African violet quilt that I'm, or Afghan that I made six years ago this month. I finished it six years ago this month. And it was over 120 African violet hexagons crocheted together. So I know that I had to have been crocheting for at least a year at that point. Because um, <clears throat> I would not have taken that on. Well, my first project was a king size blanket that took me <laughs> five months I think five months to finish and it was chevron i learned to do that through jayden stitches that's how i discovered youtube jayden stitches crochet all of it is because of one blanket <clears throat> and um so i think i've been crocheting probably eight years i think i'm not positive on that and until a memory pops up that proves up to me otherwise i'm gonna say it's been about eight years i've been crocheting i learned to crochet as a child um, I learned to knit, I want to say four or five years ago. I didn't really start picking it up till about two or three years ago. I want to say closer to three. My time span, like, I, like <laughs> my timeline is all like this because I don't really remember the details of things. I don't write it down. I don't, and unless it shows up in my Facebook memories, I have no idea. Um, I started spinning about two weeks ago by the time you see this video it'll be about two two and a half weeks um what is spinning because i get asked that a lot what is spinning you need to explain what spinning is spinning is taking yarn take no it's not yarn taking wool and spinning it and creating yarn that's how wool yarn is created it's spun um really into it and i have been hardcore head first down the rabbit hole of spinning i am so obsessed um i have spun seven hanks now i think i think i just finished my seventh one this morning this is the first three hanks created into a hat <laughs> i knit it into it and it looks big but i have a really big head um this bottom part is acrylic because i don't like this wool on my face a whole lot um, some of the other wools I have are much softer. This was part of the kit that I showed you guys a while back. So I also make them bigger so that my ponytail fits in there. But I took this from Fluffy Fluff Wool Fibers. I spun it and then I knit it up and now it is an actual item. <laughs> and I cannot tell you my level of excitement. I don't care that it's ugly and the colors don't make sense. I'm really proud of it and I am going to treasure this for a long time. I think the coolest part is how the thick thin works up because some of this is like a rope. It's really thick. I, I was just, this is the very first, actually, yeah, I started with this color. This is the very first yarn I ever spun in life and this was as I progressed. And actually I believe the yellow would have went to this color and then I would have went that way in chronological order of when it was spun. But um, it's very thick thin. It's very funky. 
The colors, like, like I said, don't make sense. These were colors that were in the pack that was a set that I bought with my spindle. And I think when it washes up, it's going to be even funkier. The, the, the wool has been washed. After you spin it, you give it a little soaky and a little bath. But um, I think after, I, actually, I don't even know. I just like it. I like it. I'm so proud of it. <clears throat> so Carolina Fiber Festival is the festival that I went to. It is in Raleigh, North Carolina at the North Carolina State Fairgrounds. It was in just one of the buildings of the fairground and it was not a really big festival. Like I've seen festivals online that are way bigger than this, but this was really good for my first time. And I'm going to give you guys an idea of my experience as a first timer and I'm definitely at the end of this going to show you a haul. So I'm going to talk to you about what it was like for me give you tips maybe um so first of all research the and i watched a video from chevy rail from five years ago and she was talking about going to your first fiber festival and she was giving tips some of those tips are a little outdated because five years ago it was more common to have cash and um now it seems like everybody has one of those devices that connects to their phones so she mentioned in her video that always have cash and i'm it's always a good idea to have cash anyway, but I think most places prefer a card just because the ease of it. And uh, at, at least this event connection was only a mild problem with one of the guys and he actually ended up using a different device and it like went right through. So it was not a real big deal to me. Um, so that might be outdated, but it might not be because I've only been to one fiber festival and she gave the advice to carry cash in case connectivity problems, which it might be valid at some other locations. But for this event, it made more sense to just have a card. Um, she also gave really good advice to make sure you have a budget and an idea of what you want going in. And I'm going to tell you that from my experience, I did that and I still didn't stick by <laughs> I still didn't stick by what I planned. I didn't stick by what I planned. I, I had a budget and it was a very high budget for some of you so you're gonna say oh my god $250 is a lot to me $250 knowing what some of these yarns cost I wish I'd had 500 I'm trying to be really careful with my money I have other things coming up and so $250 was a little bit of a stretch for me and I even went above that and I'll show you why um, $250 is reasonable. You get a lot for $250. And like I said, I'm going to show you exactly what I bought. My plan going in was to buy fiber to spin. And then I saw the hanks of yarn that were neons. And I was like, I was very good though. I was very good. Um, I also went thinking my husband would help me to keep me on track. And he did not. <laughs> he did not. All right, you want to come to bed? think I can reach the door. Tripod to the rescue. All right. Can you lay down? Bentley missed me a lot yesterday. So, and he's smelling little man's little, little man. Can I tell you? Little man spun. He did a really good job for his first time. I'm pre-drafting a lot of it for him, so he's just really spinning and trying to get the feel of the the spindle. I did a small video for the members, but when he decides to sit down and do it again, when he's properly dressed, um, I will do a video for you guys if he sits down and decides to do it again, because with his ADHD, he, he was in 10 minutes and he's like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I was like, you sat longer than I thought you would. <laughs> So like I said, my idea was to go in. I wanted fiber to spin. And there was way more indie dyers and that type of thing than there were fibers. So I struggled with that. And also I'm very picky with my colors. Like I like bright colors. I hate dull muted colors. Hi, can you leave that alone? You are just smelling everything. Um, I'm just going to move that out of your way. Okay, we'll just put it right there. 
and then there's no temptation for you to chew the wood or the yarn. Okay? Are you good now? Bentley is my one and a quarter year old. Oh, maybe he's one and a half now. Yeah, he's one and a half now. He's my one, my one and a half year old puppy dog. He's my best friend. He's my emotional support animal. And he will probably pop in his bed like any minute. Or he's going to lay behind me and smell Lucas's wool. Get out of that bucket, mister. He likes the smell of the wood spindles. Just come remove that temptation from your life too, bud. Yeah, I have two almost full batteries, so when this one dies, we'll be good. Okay, so anyway. I also tried to research, but the Carolina Fiber Fest was not... Their website was okay. It was lackluster. So their Instagram and Facebook is almost useless in the fact that they post a bunch of yarn memes and pictures and like jokes and stuff but they don't post any information about the festival which is irritating because I was that's where I was looking for my information they did have a list of vendors that had a drop down menu and you had to open all these little drop down menus to get the links for all of the vendors and because this was a last minute decision to go to this event I did not have the time to sit and I didn't have the patience to sit and keep opening drop down menu so they really need work on the technological aspect and the promoting and the marketing of this festival. Um, that was my main complaint. <clears throat> Everybody was super friendly. It was extremely overwhelming to me because I am not good in social situations very often. I have a history of social anxiety, like really bad social anxiety. I'm also socially awkward on top of that because of the social anxiety. I also don't do real well in dense crowds. Like I start to get nervous, panicky. And because of my ADHD, um, too much information, noise, lighting happening at one time, I get very overstimulated and my brain starts to want to just shut down. Um, or I have the urge to escape. <laughs> so I was not in the building for more than two hours, but I didn't need more than two hours because we went up and down and peaked in every booth um I didn't go into every booth because I knew I was on a budget I knew what I wanted and I tried to stick to that even though I failed miserably I didn't go horribly over budget I don't know my exact numbers but I went slightly above budget um maybe by 20 or 50 dollars but but I also bought art from an artist and I was not planning that. So technically the yarn was on budget. I just went over with one of the purchases because I added yarn or the, the um, art into the budget. I'll show you that too. All right, so they, get, they had these at the beginning. This is a map of all the vendors and the vendors are listed. And this is a lot of information and my brain doesn't want to process it. So this was very like... <laughs> I folded it up and put it in my bag and we just looked at what we looked at. What I was looking for, what my idea was, I wanted to just look through the booths, see if I could see some fiber that I wanted to weave up. Because you guys know I really love color, like a lot. And so I was looking for brightly colored or like unusually colored fibers that came in fluff. Now, I'm going to unbraid this to give you an idea because I braided it up. I'm going to give you an idea because I really want to talk about this yarn specifically. This is fiber. This is fluff that you spin and turn into yarn. Okay. This is what the, it's just, it's wool. It's combed so that all the fibers are going in the same direction. It's dyed. You pull it, you put it on the spindle. This is merino wool. See how cute this little braid is? Okay. These fibers were in a giant bowl, just kind of balled up in there. So it looked like a bowl of cotton candy, which is attractive and colorful, and it was pretty colors, right? And it was $5.50 an ounce, which an ounce is a pretty good amount to spin with. Um, to give you an idea, 
a normal hank of yarn like this is five ounces so you would need five ounces to make 252 yards of a four weight yarn but like it would be way more like an ounce would probably make 250 yards of a much thinner yarn if you spun this thinner which i'm spinning it a lot thinner than this <laughs> let me let me just tell you all right so this is cool and i was like i don't know how this works and i saw a couple colors that i liked from this lady and she didn't have a whole lot and her she had like a religious name for her her shop i don't know where my phone is it was something it had something to do with i didn't bring my phone it had something to do with gate but it was a religious name. I don't remember what her name was. She was very small. She had stuff for felting and then she had merino in a bowl. And I, I was like, okay, well, I wanted some of this. And I was like, okay, but like, I don't know how to ask for, I just want an ounce of this color, an ounce of the pink, an ounce of the green, etc. And so I was like, I'm going to walk away and see what else they have because across the way was braids. And the braids were all braided up and bagged. And there's a little card in there with a colorway and there's a card that tells you what kind of yarn it was and this was 20 i think this was about 25 dollars but it's four ounces it's 4.25 ounces of rambouillet so this is rambouillet wool and the color is pop rocks this is jazz turtle creations esther um I believe it was Esther that was actually, it was one person running the booth. I believe it was Esther. It had to have been Esther because um, I did look her up. <laughs> uh, so I, I talked to Esther for a minute. Very friendly, very outgoing, very just, I, just chill. She was like one of those people that I, I would like to hang out with. Right. And she was talking about, she does... So if you check out jazzturtle.com, I believe they're they're also on, I found them either on Facebook or Instagram because I would love to have another one of these in this colorway because, oh my God, and she was talking about, she's so excited about the, uh, how much goes in the black light because it's neon, it's fluorescence. <laughs> she's talking about, she, it is funny, she said she went out to go check on the, the horn, what are those? The horned, the bugs that eat tomato plants. Horned something or another. I can't think of it. And she said she went out there with her black light to, to pick them off her plant. And she said, because they glow. I was like, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> you know? And she said that when she went out there, she shone, shone the light through her studio window. And she saw just how much this glows. And I was like, yeah, I can see that it glows. Like, it, I mean, there's clear fluorescence in here, right? So... I, I just felt I, like this color is everything. It's so, and look at how beautiful this is. Okay, whereas across the way the fluff was just balled up like cotton candy. And the reason I'm telling you that is because this actually comes back to. At the end of the day, I realized I had only bought this for for spinning, and I was disappointed in myself because that was why I came here. Isn't this so pretty? I'm kind of obsessed with Jazz Turtle now. Just saying. I like the name is cool. So this was $25 for four ounces. This was $5 an ounce, which is pretty close to the same price. It's a dollar more for four ounces, or for five, for an ounce. Wow, my brain. It's about the same price. It's, it's slightly off. It's not much off, right? So, at the end of the day, I was like, I really need to go buy more fiber. Like, that's what I came here for. So we went back to the lady with the bowl of cotton candy. And I bought it, and it was, I really just wanted, like I said, I wanted an ounce of each color, but I didn't know if I was allowed to break it into an ounce. And I tried to ask the lady questions, and she was like, well, and she just shoved it in a bowl and measured it and said, if you want these, it's $47. I was like, okay, I did not speak up for myself because I was nervous and I was having anxiety and I didn't know how to handle myself in the situation, what's appropriate? Am I gonna insult her? You know, I was thinking of all these things. And so I just, I bought it for $47 for 7.7 .7 ounces, which isn't bad. It is really similar in cost to that, but I had a really hard time swallowing that situation. 
I, I started to regret my purchase immediately. Like, did I just jump on it? Should I went and bought, for that price, another braid, another two braids from Jazz Turtles that I really liked, and they're in those beautiful braids. Like, should I have done that? And so I was having a lot of regret. And then I'm sitting in the car, and this was like an hour after the purchase, right? And I was like, why not make your own braid? Why not pull the yarns apart into the three colors you wanted, into the ounce per color, and make your own braid. This made me feel like I got my money's worth more than looking at a grocery store bag shoved with what looked like cotton candy. Just the mentality of that, because this is what it looked like in a grocery store bag. I had a hard time swallowing that this was 40, 40 whatever I said, $47 for a bag full of what looked like not really taken care of cotton candy. Like it was literally, she balled it up and shoved it in there. So presentation is everything people. It's everything. It's everything. Like if you're going to do a market and I would never do a market because I would hate it. <laughs> you have to really think you can't just shove stuff on a table and expect people to come buy it. You really need to think about the way you're presenting it because that me making this into a braid, I stopped having regret instantaneously. So this is about three ounces because I separated them into about an ounce each because all they had of this gorgeous peachy corally color was somebody went in there and ripped it in half is what happened because it was in a bigger ball. So I probably could have done that. Um, just putting it and my braid does not look as good as hers because I'm not, I've never done this before. Just simply putting it into a braid with colors that I think are going to go together in the spinning process. This made me feel so much better about my purchase. Isn't that weird? So this was the last purchase I made of, no it wasn't. I made one more after this and I'll tell you that story too. So before I went and purchased this, I went by another booth. That's all the fiber I bought. I'm going to put that in Lucas's little box because it's right there and it works. The first purchase, I, well, we'll go with the first purchase I made of the day. So my idea was to go through and look at the booths and decide from there because my brain was very overstimulated and overwhelmed and I just kept feeling like, ah, oh, I don't know if I like this because <laughs> I wanted everything and I was worried about money and I was on a budget and I was stressing myself out and I was having anxiety and like all those things. And so I'm like, I'm going to do a once over because that was another... Um, Chevy Rail tip is like look at everything and then decide what you really want. She also said have a plan and think about what you're going to make with it, but that's not how I that's not how I craft. I buy it and let it inspire me. So, I will look at something and sometimes it'll sit on my shelf for 2 years and then I'll be like, "All right, I'm ready to work with that and I know exactly what I'm going to do." That's how my my craftiness works. She is much more I I she buys yarn for the projects and I plan the projects on the yarn. So we reverse, we do it different. Neither is wrong and neither is correct. That's just how our brains work, right? And everybody has their own way of doing things and none of it is wrong. So with that being said, um, I was trying to follow her advice and go up and through because it was not a very large venue. Wherever I did with the paper, there was maybe a hundred vendors. Nope, 54 vendors. There's only 54 vendors. So it wouldn't have taken me more than an hour to peruse all the stalls and do a once over. And um, it didn't take much longer than that. <laughs> I got about halfway through the stalls and I saw an artist there. His name is Ken McNeil. And I really was drawn to his paintings. And a lot of his paintings are on not canvas but like wood and he had have you ever seen on the side of the barns especially like in rural america they have on the side of the barns the what looks like a painted quilt piece um he had some of those and they're on wood so you just attach them right to your barn and i was immediately drawn because i have the dream to have my own farm my own little micro farm and me and little man little man really enjoyed it 
he was really into it and I was surprised by that. He was really into looking at the spindles and looking at like the little gadgets that, I mean he's a gadget guy, but he was really into seeing what the tools were that these artists were using and I was just, I bonded with him on a level like I, I might cry talking about it because it made me so proud because Juju, will, my 18 year old, she'll go and she'll look and she'll shop with me and give me her advice on colors or whatever and she's interested in my part of it. She's interested on my behalf. He was legitimately interested. And like that really, it meant a lot to me. Like it made me really happy. <laughs> It made my heart, my little yarny heart happy. And so he was by my side in the booths. And Mr. Cinnamon was just standing in the hallway like bored. <laughs> but little man was shopping with his mom. And there are very few instances where we have a commonality. Because he is so different than me and so alike me. That like it's hard to line up where we both have the same interest. And um, he was into it. And he wants to go to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. And I'm like, we're going. Like, I don't care. We're going. <laughs> I'm going to have to really work hard over the next two months to have money for that. But, like, we're going. And so we stopped in Ken McNeil's booth because I saw the, the, the painting of the, like, the quilt block that you put on the side of your barn. But he also had paintings of um, livestock. And... I was just like, I, I don't know. I was drawn in. I was drawn in by his paintings. And like I said, a lot of them were on wood. Or like, I, I, I don't think I picked up one that was on canvas. They were all like on chunks of wood. And they were beautiful. And I couldn't afford them because my budget was so tight. <laughs> he had paintings on wood that were this big that were $55 and worth every penny. Because he's really talented. But I had to really think about my budget right now. Um, and he had much bigger for like 350 and I so would have put it on the blank spot on my wall had I had the extra money on that day because I really was drawn to his work. He had multicolored sheeps and he had a llama with like the big pompadour on the top. Like it was just beautiful. <laughs> so I bought art for Juju and I bought art for myself. These are just prints, but, um, so his website is Kevin, or not Kevin, KenMcNeil.com. This one is called Here's the Beef, and this is Juju's because she love, love, loves cows. And she's so excited about this. We're going to go to the dollar store, not the dollar store, we're going to go to the thrift store and try to find some, some really nice frames to put on these. So I told her we got to measure them and then go hunting for really nice frames. She said this reminds her of Scarlet. And this one reminds us of Oreo, but Scarlet, Scarlet has features of a cow. And they also both, both of my dogs, grew, they uh, graze in the backyard. They eat a ton of grass. And so she likes, she really loved this. She thought it was really beautiful. But also like that looks like Scarlet to her. It even has like Scarlet's eyes. Like, how do you paint eyes that look kind? Because that's what he did. The cows look like they have kind eyes. Except that one looks a little, he looks a little shifty. <laughs> it's because the shadowing on his face makes him look like he's like, yeah, you know. I was really drawn. And the reason, I, and I was telling Mr. Cinnamon, because there was another artist there that also had paintings of livestock. But the livestocks were very whimsical and like, it was a ballerina sheep and like, stuff like that. Which I thought were really fun and cool. But... I think I was drawn to these because they look more like something I would have taken a picture of and then he painted it and to me that is more meaningful uh person it's more personal to me and then I bought this one because I was like it's me and my two babies is that not gorgeous that's me and my babies my birth babies I mean I've raised more than my birth babies but that's me and my that's Juju right here and this one's Lucas isn't that beautiful I was, I, the second I saw it, I was like, I have to buy that. I'm, I'm not even like, I'm not even going to think about it. I have to have it. And even though it's printed with this wide background here, I'm going to try to find a more squared off and then have it, um, mat, oh, have a mat pull with it. If I can find what I'm looking for. So that was my first purchase of the day. It was 
$25 for each print, which I think was a fantastic deal. Like I said, I would have loved to have one of his paintings, but I just did not have it in my budget. So hopefully I will see him again in the future at another festival because that would be really great. And then maybe I'll have money to actually buy art. All right, now I took, this was another Chevy Rel advice, bring your own bag. Couple reasons. The people that work those, those, um, the booths, they have to pay for booth rental. Depending on the event, sometimes they don't make their booth rental back. And that was another reason why I purchased from Ken McNeil's because it seemed like he didn't have nobody in there. And like nobody was stopping by his booth. And he was really nice. Like I had a little chat with him and he, like I was talking about some of his works of art and some of his um, paintings. Like he does, has paintings of also like farmhouses. And he had one of a bell tower mm -hmm. and he said it was from his brother's vacation in the Mediterranean somewhere. And I said, it looks exactly like a bell tower at the um, San Santa Barbara mission in California. And he was like, well, you know, it's the same kind of thing like the Mediterranean because a lot of the architecture in California is Spanish based or Spanish inspired. And the mission to Santa Barbara is absolutely Spanish architecture. And it, it just reminded me so much. And I have a photograph of the bell tower that if I put the photograph next to his painting, you wouldn't know that he didn't take artistic liberties with my photo. It honestly, like it could be the same bell tower. And then there was another one that looked like the little church, um, the mound church, I think it's called. It's in Taylor, Michigan at Heritage Park. It looked a lot like that church. That church caught fire a couple years ago and they're, I don't know if they finished fixing it and rebuilding it. Um, but it looked a lot like that church and he, it was a church painting and it was, and I was just, I was, I really like looking through his work. He also had a, one of the little paintings that I picked up that was $55 that I really would have liked to have was a bird's nest with little tiny yarn balls in it. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. Like I would love to have that, but it just was not in my budget. Um, so like I, like I was saying, a thing that Chevy Rell said is to bring your own bag couple reasons like I was trying to say before I got all off key or off track um, they pay for booth rental but they also pay for their cards like their business cards to be made they sometimes pay for like the big post cards that I showed you with the braid um, they pay and it's like cents to the dollar but that adds up when you take their bags and you take like their cards and you take that price cuts into their profit a little bit and so I tried not to use anybody else's bag um I had to get a bag from Ken because I didn't want to just carry these around in my hand and get them messed up and they're an odd shape and they did not fit in my fallout boy bag <laughs> so I did take one of his bags um but it really helped it kept everything together and little man grabbed me flyers for other festivals so i don't know why he grabbed this one because there's no way on god's green earth i'm going to the alabama fiber festival in Brerfield, alabama but if you're in alabama you can scan that and learn more we went to the carolina fiber festival um it's not it's never too late to learn a new craft to pass along to your children or grandchildren cultural and heritage cultural heritage they did have Pete, a lot of vendors were actually spinning while they were sitting in their booths. And I didn't buy from them because I felt like they were so into what they were doing, like they didn't interact with me. And that was kind of a turn off. So I would just walk right back out of their booth. And I, that's just something if you have a booth, like interact with your people, <laughs> okay? It will make them want to buy more. That's a th like, say hi, be friendly. Don't ignore them. I'm going to change my battery. Hang on. And again, this is personal opinion, personal views. Um, I can tell that it's a hand spun yarn by looking at it. I know that you're spinning. You don't need to be out there spinning to prove that you're spinning the yarn yourself. You can talk about it to the people who are coming by. And I know that that's uncomfortable, but that really does help to sell your product is when you get out there and talk to people. And so 
the people that were instead of talking to their customers were just sitting spinning and not talking i was like that i, I walked out and there was yarn i probably would have bought had she been more friendly um anyway and then i'm definitely planning on going to the shenandoah valley fiber festival so there's the dates for that here's the map of where it's at it is in i really cannot see that clark county picturesque clark county it's halfway between leesburg and winchester there's plenty of parking and easy walking the Facebook is facebook.com forward slash SV Fiberfest. And then this is for the Ashland, North Carolina Fiberfest. And it's in Ashland, North Carolina. And that is October. So I'm going to keep those so that I can remember when those fiber festivals are. Okay, let's get on to what I really wanted to purchase. Okay. So. Um, I believe this is the next one I purchased. Queen City Yarn. I've actually heard of Queen City Yarn. I may have Queen City Yarn. Um, what I was looking for more than anything, I wasn't really looking at fiber or like thickness of yarns. I was looking for color. If I saw a color that stood out from the rest, I was drawn to that. And this one stood out to me because it was surrounded by a bunch of what i don't want to say neutral and it wasn't bland but it was not eye-popping to me it didn't catch me but this one kind of stood out and there was another one next to it that kind of stood out and i was really drawn to these colors so this is the first time i've ever had non-superwash blue face lester yarn so this is not superwash so you need to be careful that this will not felt <laughs> but i've never had blue face lester otherwise known as bfl I've never had it and it says Lottie so I'm assuming Lottie is the colorway it says hello I'm a non superwash Queen City yarn a coronation of color hand dyed in Charlotte North Carolina that's also something I was kind of wanting to look for is local people um, I believe one of these people that I purchased from was actually in Wisconsin and I don't she was from Wisconsin and I don't remember which one it was I don't remember who she was I think I purchased from her. I'm getting confused now. <laughs> the Jazz Turtle Lady, I think, is in um, Virginia. So anyway, this is Lay Flat to Dry, Hand Wash Cold. Queen City Yarns is on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit. Is that what the R in the book circle stands for? Or is that Ribbler? And Facebook. It is 100 grams, 260 yards. Which would make this what? A DK? Right? Doesn't say. It looks about a DK. But I just really like the colors. I love this marled type of yarn where it's two different colors that are twisted together. I, like, I'm just drawn to it. I, I love it so much. I have maybe three or four other Hanks that are similar to this. I know that I have a blue and green one that I believe is from Flying Goat Farms. And then I have a bluish colored one that Mr. Cinnamon got me at. It smells so wooly. <laughs> it smells like a BFL sheep. Um, Finnegan's Run, which is a local yarn shop to me. And then this one. The fact that there was so much white in it, I, I don't know why. Like, I love when the yarn is white. It has, like, pops of color. But also, it was kind of giving me, like, I don't know, Americana vibes. Even though there's, like, orange and yellow in here. <laughs> and a little, bit, a little bit of green where they meet. It was giving me Americana vibes. And I was really drawn to it. And then when I saw it, it was the Tiki Room, which is a ride at Disney World, Disneyland. The Tiki Room. Um yeah i was drawn to it so this is fangirl fangirl fiber she's at fangirlfibers.com and she does have an instagram and you can do the little code thingy and scan that with your phone and it should take you if it's if it will focus it should take you right to her this is 231 yards and 100 grams 
100 gallon. Yeah, so this has got to be a DK or close to it because this is a DK right on it. I bought two DKs and didn't even know. Kind of like that. So this one is 100% superwash merino. And I really like that there's so much white left behind. And then there's the little pops of color. I think that's going to be beautiful worked up. And then these two are from String Theory Colorworks. The people in String Theory Colorworks were ridiculously friendly. Um, although I was greeted at Fangirl Fibers as well. I don't remember. I think Queen City Yarns. I may have been greeted in there. But I really think there were a lot of people just in there. And... Um, I don't really remember because that was one of the first ones I bought. I just feel like there was a lot of people in there and I don't remember even making the purchase. I remember seeing the yarn and wanting the yarn. I don't remember the rest of the interaction in that booth. So, but Fangirl Fibers, I was greeted. I was greeted by, I think, a person. I think it was a woman. I'm not positive on that. And I was checked out by a guy. And he was super nice. And he's like, that's a really fun color. Like, I really like the tiki room. Like, and he was talking to me about the yarn. And I was like, I thought it was a really fun color. But he was really nice. So I do remember that interaction. I remember the lady that was in line in front of me that was really super rude. And she kept glaring at me for some reason. And then she was glaring at little man. And then I was trying to come back out of the line because I had, she was in front of me. She checked out already. And she's standing right to the side of me while I'm checking out. And I went to go turn and come back out. She's totally blocking my way. And she's just glaring at me. And I'm like, excuse me. And then she like stepped to the side. And, went, and I was like, she is rude. Like, <laughs> and I said it loud enough that she heard me. Rude. So these were actually on sale. This is String Theory Color Works. The, the, comp it's the compression line. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% cash style nylon. This one drew my attention. You already know why it's neons, okay? And when you put blue with neons, I'm here with it. I just need to have blue with my neons. I love, love, love it. Even though, like, blue is not fluorescent. Like, they don't have a fluorescent blue. Oh, my God. Like, I saw this, and then I saw the sign above it. This said 15% off. And I was like, yes, please. So these, these actually have the price tag on them. They were $26, but they were actually $22. And they both came with a little stitch marker. Which, do I need a stitch marker? Absolutely not. Because my daughter makes them and I have a hundred. But, I mean, as a free gift with purchase, right? <laughs> so these are both the same. They were both, um, they're just colorways of the same thing. It's 425 yards of pure awesome. It's 388 meters of squishiness, 115 grams of fabulosity. Which is one of my words on this channel. I love that. <laughs> this is the colorway fluid. Is that not gorgeous? Again, there's white in there, which I love that they leave white behind. And then this one is the color neon. No shock there, right? Um, and it these are striped yarn. So the whole purpose of these are they're striped. So it says, this one says, stripe pattern, six rows pink, six rows white, six rows electric violet, six rows black, six rows of extreme blue. This one says eight rows turquoise three rows black eight rows fuchsia three rows black eight rows green three rows black i love this it's so pretty stripe width will vary depending on gauge and sock diameter lovingly hand dyed so obviously i'm not making socks with this gorgeous yarn no sir i, I might i don't know what i'm gonna make with it but it's gonna have pretty colors in there and that's all that matters hand wash dry flat now this one is the last purchase of the day. This is a purchase that almost didn't happen because the price tag. Now, at this point, I bought four yarns. I bought the two paintings. I bought the braid. And I knew I had about... It was over 100. I don't remember exactly how much I had left of my budget. 100. I may have had $125 left of my book. May. Which tells me I need to add up how much I spent because I think I spent more than I thought I did. 
and I come up to this booth and it's Cozy Color Works. And she had kits. My girl had kits, okay? I don't buy kits because I don't use the pattern. Because even though I can knit, I don't enjoy it. And if I knit, it's gonna be knit something like a, something small, a hat, a small shawlette. Um, I have knit socks. I enjoy I enjoy knitting socks, but these are not gonna be on my feet. None of these. So I see this, this, this. Okay. Do you guys see this? It's neons. It's Barbie. And I immediately went up and went. Oh my god. And I grabbed it. I'm looking at it. And I must have drawn the attention of someone in the booth. Her booth was busy. Like, she was popping. And she was busy talking to other people. Her, I think her name was Deborah. She had a name tag on. I believe her name was Deborah. And I was just like, oh. and I looked at it. I saw $137. And I'm thinking about my budget. And I'm like, oh, but it's so pretty. I'm going to take the yarn out. We're going to look. We're going to look at it. I have not taken the yarn out yet. We're going to take the kit, the whole kit. And you see it's got something that says Barbie right there. It's got the pattern for a beautiful shawl. The shawl was hanging up. And even Mr. Cinnamon was like, feel this yarn. Because the shawl was hanging up for display. Is that not beautiful? I am not making this shawl. But I have the pattern if I decide later on to do something like this. Um, this scares me because it's a lot of different stitches. And I have not done a lot of different stitches in knitting. And I really prefer knitting in the round and not back and forth. And so I don't know that I'm going to actually make this shawl. Ooh, what was that? Oh, how cute is this picture? This is DK. I didn't realize it was DK. I love that it's DK. I am more prone to want to work with DK than work with fingering because fingering is so skinny. 10 grams of colors A, B, C, and D. The bonus patterns for the little tiny. That's cute. The little tiny outfit. The bonus pattern. That's so cute. That's so cute. I'm not gonna knit little baby outfit either. But so this is what the shawl contain or the kit contains. It says Barbie chic shawl pattern with the Ravelry code, so I can download it on my phone too. Uh, four skeins of CCW, which stands for Cozy Color Works. DK Superwash Merino, 275 yards each. Two Barbie shoe stitch markers, which is what's in this cute little pouch. Which is so cute. This little pouch is so stinking cute. And they're just knit stitch markers. And they're Barbie shoes. They're so cute. <laughs> and they're metal. They're like really well made. I was so excited for those. I love Barbies growing up. Like I love Barbies at Cabbage Patch Dolls so much. They were life. Um, one Barbie stitch marker pouch from the Sexy Knitter, at sign The Sexy Knitter. Matching pattern for top and bag for your Barbie from Mud Puppy Kits. Let's talk about this yarn because, oh my god, color. My camera is actually reading it really well. Look at these colors. Okay, so we have the turquoise, which is the Barbie in the aerobics outfit. <laughs> The fluorescent yellow and the fluorescent pink reminds me of Barbie and the Rockers. Do you remember that? And then the one in the middle has all of those colors speckled on it. So while these are absolutely going to go into a project together, it's not going to be a knit project. It's going to be something that I crochet that I want to wear all the time. Because, oh my god, these colors are amazing. And I know that if I choose to knit this project, it will not get done. I know that. I know this about myself. I don't enjoy knitting as much as I love crocheting. And so, absolutely, these are so gorgeous, and they're going to go together, and I am so happy, so happy with these. <laughs> and they are really soft. And when I felt the shawl, the shawl was really soft. So this is 275 yards each. 
so I have more than enough to make myself a shirt. A 3X. And I might just have to design it myself. And I have no problem doing that because I'm pretty good at doing that. So with all of that, it was $137, which set me way over budget. So anyway, the full story is I walked up to her booth. She saw that I walked up to her booth. She saw that I really, really wanted that. And I really couldn't afford it. I had the money, but that money was earmarked for other things. So I had a lot of guilt, like, I really want it. And had I seen that first, I would have bought it and not thought twice about it. And I walked away. I actually went into her booth first, and she had another fluorescent yarn that was similar to this, but more along those colors. And I was touching it. I was like, it's so pretty. I think her prices were about $30 a hank, if I recall, but I may be wrong. Well worth it. Like, it's not, the money was not a problem with her individual skeins, but I was thinking, okay, but if they're 20 something, $30 a piece, like the shawl kit is well worth it because I also get a free pattern and I get, like, the stitch markers are so cute. And like, and then I'm like, at this point is when I'm like, I came here for fluff, not yarn. Why am I buying yarn? Why am I buying yarn? Why am I buying yarn? I had a conversation with Mr. Cinnamon. That's when we went back over and bought the fluff that I ended up braiding. And after I bought the fluff, I instantly had a regret. Like, you should have just bought the Barbie kit because you know you're not going to stop thinking about it. You know you're going to dream about that because it's everything. Like, those colors are everything, <laughs> okay? It lights my brain up. I don't do solid colors, as you can tell. I am very much a variegated girl. But these together are going to be just... So I thought about it and I was like, I'm going to go buy anyway. I'm going to go over budget because up until that point, I was still in my budget. I still had a little bit of money left over. I don't regret buying the fluff now that I braided it. But at the time I was like, I should, I should have just bought the kit. I had enough money. I would have been done. We would have been out of there and I would have been fine because I got the braid from the other lady and... and <clears throat> I have other events coming up that I want to go to, but like, I kept thinking about that Barbie kit. I'm like, we're going to go get the Barbie kit and we're going to leave this place because I'm done. <laughs> I'm broke. And so Mr. Sim is like, I think that's a good idea. So I walked up to her booth and I grabbed it and I started to walk towards her register and she's all, I knew you'd be back for that. <laughs> I didn't even realize she noticed me because there were a lot of people in her booth when I went up there. But like, I gasped out loud. Like I went, oh! like she could tell. I was like, I knew I was gonna come back too. Like I could not walk away. Like it's so pretty. And then her and two of the people that were talking to her, they all were like the Barbie kid. Yeah, she bought the bar. Like they were all clapping and being loud. I was like a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> and I was like, I just, I needed it. I needed it, you know? I'm not going to make the Barbie shawl at all. Like, we know this. But I'm going to make something fabulous with that yarn. Because, oh my god. That is cinnamon stitches all day long. Can you imagine just wearing a shirt that looks like that? Just, I'm thinking just, like, my brain is on fire thinking of ideas of what I could do. Just, so, I mean, I could do something like that. I could do something like that in stripes. <laughs> Ideas. Um, so when the, when the, we were only there about two hours total, I spent a lot of money in two hours. I had a really good time, probably by myself. I mean, little man did enjoy it. He was very into everything and asking questions and wanting to know. He was really into the spindles. There was a lady there in particular and she had, um, um, 3D printed sp spindles and like the bait the stick was wood but the 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 whirl the the, sp the round part on the stick was made out of 3D printed materials and they were really bright colors and they were really fun and they were a reasonable price 
and he really wanted one and I said we cannot do that right now we don't even know if you like to spin so if he decides he likes to spin when when May when it's time to go to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival I will buy him an upgrade like if it's something he still likes because he his little spindles were cheap they were really cheap they're like seven dollars on Amazon I have a problem with the way these feel they feel very um, dry and powdery they're not coated so we're gonna paint his red we actually do that with enamel paint because I have some left over from the front door he don't like the way it feels either so um yeah it's a popsicle stick type thing and if you know you know <laughs> so um, but it's very lightweight but some of the ones were super like this is the stick this is the whirl um, the whirls were 3d print printed with really colorful plastics and like they even had one made out of a, a fidget spinner which would have been perfect for him and then she had little 3d printed sheep inside the the fidget spinner and I was thinking like I could totally do that I could totally do that for him you would just have to make the fidget spinner stationary on the stick but I could totally do it so it'll be something fun to do something that he would probably really enjoy um but even though it was anxiety ridden it was very overstimulating at times I felt so overwhelmed through the whole thing because I love yarn on a unnatural level it makes me so ridiculously happy and to have that much of a variety in front of you and your limited funds and you're like really trying to think about where you purchase it was very overwhelming to me I am so glad I went and these are just some things to think about if you're gonna go to a fiber festival um, so I at least have two possibly three more plans that I'm gonna go to this year so I'm gonna I'm gonna really think about before we go I'm gonna really think about what I want to purchase and I'm gonna really work hard to get my YouTube money going so that we <laughs> <laughs> can afford to go but um I really really enjoyed the experience and I really look forward to seeing what I create with these beautiful yarn masterpieces um there were a few shops in there that were more along the lines of someone took all of the inventory from a local yarn shop and put it in their booth and I stayed clear of those because if I wanted to go to a local yarn shop I would have went to a local yarn shop I didn't want mass produced yarns even if it was a little yarn shop quality that's not what i went to the fiber festival for and there were a lot of people in those booths like grabbing up the malabrigo and stuff and i was like mm, if they got malabrigo i'm not going in there because i can get malabrigo anywhere if they had like any of those types of yarns i steered clear i wanted local dyers local spinners local fluff people like that's what i wanted and from now on the roving is just gonna be called fluff that's what we're gonna call it on the show it's fluff I bought fluff. I bought braided fluff that I'm in love with. This is going to make fabulous yarn. And we're going to be having, um, we're probably going to be doing weekly spinning videos. Not where I'm spinning, but where I'm, we're talking about my progress because this is my Koigu braid that I bought. And can you see how much better I'm spinning than from this? <laughs> like, I've improved so much in just two weeks. I'm so impressed with myself with this. I need to actually go wash that. But um, I also have another of that colorway on my spindle. And I have one more, I think they were three ounces. I have another full ounce to spin. So this is, this is, about, this is about an ounce of yarn. So I have no idea how to figure out the yardage at this point but we'll figure it out as we go like this is all a huge learning process the whole everything in regards to spinning i'm starting to itchy with that hat but boy is that warm <laughs> itching a little bit i don't know if this was super wash or not but um it's a little bit on the itchy side and it's fun it's fun and i'm going to keep that around because i did that I was so impressed with myself that I was able to take fluff and turn it into an actual knit project. Oh, this is another one I spun. I have another one of these in the other room. I kind of want to buy some more of this off of Amazon. This was Q Oreo. This was only $25 for, I think, four ounces on Amazon. And I love that colorway a lot. And I want to make something with that colorway. 
Go on, Oreo. Hang on. I'll get it. Go. Go get Daddy. Go. That's what I get for not locking the door. You still back there? Yeah. Benjamin is still back there. So, yeah. See? See how this has, like, the cool twisted colors? Kind of like, that's what, I, that's what lights my brain up. Like, oh. And this smells so delicious because I used my own soap for this. Oh, all right, guys. That was my trip to the <laughs> Carolina Fiber Fest. I hope you found this video entertaining or you learned something. Check your... I will link a website below that lists all of the Fiber Fests in the world. Um, I also got that link from the Chevy Rail video. I will link Chevy Rail and that video below because I've been talking about her a lot lately because I've been learning from her. Um, but I will try to remember to post all the links in the video below because I talked about a lot of different people and I would really like you to check all these people out. I mean, if you see something you like, these companies, while these are all wild colors and that is not attractive to everyone, they also had very, um, what is the word? Where like the masses are drawn to it. They had those type of colors too. So they had like mauve and like red and like pink and like blue and <laughs> like the colors that more people are drawn to. Um, I don't remember what that's called. More marketable colors, I guess. Whereas I'm kind of like, I want like the stuff that you can see from across the yard, across the street, down downtown. <laughs> I want to be seen for miles, okay? I like bright colors. Which is why I got my Halloween shirt on, because it glows in the dark. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.